it's going to be a fun week for us. Uh, opportunity, I think a fun week for everybody who gets excited about covering uh, or watching or, or, or listening and talking about Florida State Athletics. Uh, obviously, the luncheon this week, we get to go visit the tour of duty this week as well. Uh, as uh, that will be Thursday morning, bright and early. Uh, but all of this on the heels, and it makes it all the more exciting, all of this on the heels of what happened last week at the uh, BOT meeting where uh, Michael Alford, uh, with the clarion call, as I would describe it, uh, letting folks know about time for us to ride. Now, it is complicated, and there's a lot to work through that. And on that front, even though we will talk about it today, and I'll give you my opinion about that and, and what it meant or what I think he was signaling, perhaps. Uh, Wednesday night, it looks like, we're going to have an opportunity to do some uh, little War Chant TV. I will host that, and we'll have uh, members of the staff. I'm not sure, Tom, if we settled in on which group of uh, folks of this massive staff will be joining me on that night. I look forward to it. I know whomever it will be will be uh, – fun and informed and, and interesting. And and so I would assume it's, it, you know, Ira, Cor I don't know who all is going to be there, but uh. I, I would think Ira, of course, is going to be one of the two. Uh, he just had uh, posted within the last, I'd say 90 minutes, a column it's on scary. the chant.com, which is excellent. And uh, if your eyebrows weren't raised on Friday with some of the comments from the board of trustees meeting, maybe they would be raised after reading a quote or two from his column today. So he's definitely gonna be a part of it. I, you know, Gene loves to get involved with this kind of stuff as well, talking about the big picture. Uh, and, and we had a conversation on War Chant TV on Friday after the meeting was over. So he might be as well a favorite. I would put him down as a favorite if we were doing props on what War Chant staff is going to be there. But Ira, most certainly, he's minus 10,000. Well, I look forward to it because I think everybody's got an opinion on this and everybody likes this topic because it's of great interest to anybody who cares about Florida State. I mean, this is one of those unanimously we're all intrigued by topics, right? This isn't like, oh, I really like softball, but the guy over here doesn't give a damn about softball. I really like baseball. The guy over here doesn't care about baseball, only football. This is the future of Florida State Athletics. This is, the, in, in many ways, uh, the university. So you look at big picture, the importance of this subject matter, and you realize that uh, this is, is it's captured the imagination of, of so many. Uh, I look forward to that. Uh, Seven o'clock, War Chant TV roundtable. I got confirmation today that uh, ESPN.com's David Hale will join us as well for that. I look forward to getting his perspective. Obviously, as somebody who covers the ACC for ESPN, no doubt he'll have a perspective that might differ solely from those that are looking at it through the lens of what's best for Florida State or Clemson, for that matter. And it will be fascinating. So I look forward to that. Just want to throw that out there. You're right to draw attention to Iris Column today on warchant.com about this subject matter. Ira will join us on the show uh, this afternoon. First of all, on the field, let's get with the getting. I, you know, what a disastrous campaign it has been for Florida State basketball this year. But tell me that you didn't absolutely take a moment to savor the joy and the pain in the eyes of Miami fans everywhere as they did the unthinkable. What a devastating and embarrassing defeat for Miami basketball at home. Now, it's not something that should leave them bereft of hope. It's not something that should even surprise them. What I mean by that is they're used to losing to Florida State in basketball. They have now done so 10 of the last 11 times they have played Florida State. So, oh, well, a loss to Florida State. It's just what we do. If you're Miami, oh, well, a loss at home to Florida State. It's just what you do if you're Miami. But when you consider that, I think you can make a very compelling case that Miami is the best team in the ACC in the sport of basketball this year. And Florida State, not the worst, but certainly in the conversation as one of the worst teams in the ACC this year and trailing by 25 in the second half on the road. Yeah, yeah. Add all those factors together, and it is shocking. It is stunning, and it was joyous. The many camera angles from the student section, the John Ruiz disgust as it fell before him at his feet, and the celebration began as he walked away in disgust, recognizing 
Oh, yeah. Like a dumbass, I tweeted out at halftime, FS who? Clown. Add to the laundry list of dumbassery for John Ruiz since he's been a public figure representing Miami and their NIL. That clown show continues. And that loss, whoo, that'll stick in the coffers. That's a toughie. That's a toughie out of you. Walk out of the Wasco there thinking, man, I'm used to losing to Florida State. They kind of bend us over on the regular. But, man, I thought today up 25, there was just no way. You can't possibly blow it to that team. No way, no how. But they did. They did in a most beautiful fashion. Credit to Matthew Cleveland, who's made it a habit of hitting big, big shots as the buzzer rings. Florida State gets the win rather improbably and sets records in the process. It should be noted uh, some, of, some of those records, and I'll get to all of that. It's comical, but it was the largest deficit overcome in a conference game in the 70-year history of the ACC. So you got that on the ledger. Add that one. It was the biggest lead ever blown by an AP top 25 team in a loss. Not everybody recognizes that one. I'll say it again. It was the largest lead ever blown by an AP top 25 team. They've been playing basketball for a long time. Nobody's ever choked it away the way that Miami did in this fashion as an AP top 25 team. So glorious indeed, celebrate at their expense, recognizing, of course, that Florida State hasn't been good at basketball this year. It is the one moment to shine in the sun, and it was awesome. Onward we move. Questions about what Florida State would discover on the road against a TCU team that was ranked in the top 10. And we understand early season, in particular, early season college baseball polls are dubious indeed. But a program that has consistently fielded one of the better teams in that conference a program that has projected several Major League Baseball players and one that is preseason in the top 10 is a stern test for Florida State, uh, a team obviously under new leadership in Link Jarrett, one that went into the games undefeated, but with some question marks about their toughness, the consistency with which they can play, the pitching staff and the depth of said pitching staff in particular and all the Knowles do is go on the road and equip themselves more than nicely. They take the series, winning the first two games of said series, 10-1 to 1 and 10-8. to 8. And by rights, should have won yesterday's game, if not for fielding lapses, which is something we will be keeping a close eye on, as that cost them the game yesterday. Now, the bats didn't show up yesterday in the way that they have in each and every game this year. And that is the added bonus. I think when you look at this Florida State team, We'll watch to see how much better they get uh, defensively. But I think the consistency in this offense will really be on display for mo much of the year, certainly the top to the middle part of the lineup. I think when we get down there and some of the youth uh, reveals itself lower in the order, when you see some of the freshmen that play there, uh, they looked overmatched at times. You saw some kids really look overmatched. But beyond that, I think Florida State has enough offensively to uh, be a thorn in the side of most of the teams that they'll face in weekend series. Now, there's a long way to go, and I said this before the series began, and I'll reiterate it again here. This series wasn't going to tell you whether or not Florida State is going to win the College World Series or even be a College World Series participant, and it wasn't going to tell you if they lost this weekend series that they were a bad team that was going to struggle to compete in their own conference or anything of the ilk. I understand that, but you can get excited by results, even regular season three-game series results. It doesn't mean you shouldn't embrace aspects of what is revealed as you learn them. And I do think for Florida State, the approach at the plate is a good one. An awful lot of contact, an awful lot of hard contact. But something sticks out to me that I wondered about before the season began, and it's something that I'm going to continue to watch because it seems to me to be evident. And that is, there's a breath of fresh air. It's a program that I think has a bunch of guys happy to come to work. The clubhouse is no longer fractured. The clubhouse is a place that's probably a lot of fun to be. And when you're a good team or you have good players, and they were not devoid of good players even last year, getting the most out of that talent is incumbent upon the coach 
Obviously, the player has to take ownership of that as well. And there are a lot of facets that come into play as to whether or not you can see that potential and have it realized. Well, I think one of the quickest ways to have it realized is for guys to be relaxed, to be around one another, and to enjoy each other's company, and to play hard for one another. That, well, that is overwhelmingly evident through the early portion of this season, and it resulted in a series victory for Florida State against TCU. Florida State, no doubt, will be ranked now, and now no longer a team that we wonder, are they capable of playing with the better teams? We'll see. There are bigger series to come and important series to come, and we'll learn more each time they play. But you got to like this team. They're a lot of fun early on, and you know we can start to draw some conclusions to some extent. You know How good is the pitching really going to be? Baumeister was simply fantastic. You got a big boy start yesterday. That was good to see. Saturday, eh, you know, obviously the depth of pitching you worry about. Do they have three frontline starters for a weekend rotation? Maybe, maybe not. They got two. We'll learn more as the weeks go by. That was fun. I'll circle back in a moment to talk about what's going on with ACC, Florida State, its place in the conference. But, Tom, would you echo those or share any concerns or anything else to, to illuminate regarding the baseball team? Yeah, I think they've got three quality arms, and and that's what we know right now through two weeks. Montgomery's always had the stuff, but he looks yeah. like he's comported himself much better, more consistently. This was a good test for him. He needed a couple of days because of a lower body issue. They wouldn't go into specifics, but that's why he started on Sunday. There wasn't a demotion. Big time start from Bob Meister on Friday, and then Crowell, what do you do with him? What do you do with him? Do you make him somebody who's available to you twice a weekend? I think that was originally the plan, but he threw 40-plus pitches on Friday and was lights out. Or do you convert him to a starter? Because if you do that, and he's obviously got the stuff, meaning the stamina, to be a starter, that's that's nothing new, then you have a weekend rotation that's stacked. Where Who's your three? It's, it's actually tough. You might set it up each weekend based upon the lineup you're facing. But if those are your three starters, then who are your three most reliable bullpen arms? So they've still got issues with the pitching staff, but I feel a hell of a lot better than I did before the season started about what their starting rotation will look like in a given weekend as we set up for the important series and conference play. Again, the back half of this schedule has a ton of ranked teams. I think the ACC had eight teams in the top 25 of, of this week's rankings. In D1 baseball, Florida State is up to number 16 in the country. TCU, curiously, drops to 10th. Not sure how that works, but okay, whatever. Florida State is back in the conversation there. I feel good about the first six innings if they got to have if it's a must have two out of three kind of weekend. I just don't know how they're going to get to the twenty seventh out, and then also there are going to be some extra outs that you just have to account for uh, defensively right now. Not the greatest uh, in the infield, and I think you should expect an error or two, or uh, if not one that's put on the score sheet, then something that you know you say I really would have appreciated if we make that play. I think that's a routine play, and you might disagree with the official score. Those are the things that are the concern. I'm not too worried about the offensive approach and, and the production that you're going to get out of the lineup. Uh, Ross has been a very good player. He wasn't available yesterday. And then once that kid got out of the first inning for TCU and he walked in two runs, that breaking ball was unhittable by our veterans just as much as our freshmen. So uh, I think that was a, more of a, a storyline about a kid who found a groove and had a wipeout breaking ball pitch that we just couldn't solve. And then their closer that came in for the final few innings threw a lot of meatballs that we just couldn't square up and hit out of the ballpark. So. Uh, again, I think the offense is going to be fine. Frontline pitching looks to be okay. How the hell do you get from your starter to that 27th out, I think, is going to be the critical thing. Well, balls that we did square up and hit hard and then slipped running out of the batter's box inexplicably all three times. I mean, get In some teeth, boys. What the hell are we doing? Yeah. And uh, there were a couple of shots to right yesterday. Both teams, yeah. they out hit yeah. us. And, and we got out of a couple of jams. I think we were a little fortunate, actually, in a way. Play in the big key situation on first and third. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two two huge double plays, but you know there was the hit by, was huge, yeah. there was the Tibbs hit to right, and then also carry on second at bat to right field. I think that certainly at Hauser that's gone with the short porch there, uh, but the the field conditions, the temperature and such, I, we probably produced a few more runs yesterday. But all in all, it's just a pleasure to watch Florida State baseball, and that's probably the big takeaway through seven games. Yeah, I'll be watching Nander really closely. He stinks uh, defensively. He's impossible to watch, and he's an error waiting to happen. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if they make a move there. Uh, I root for the kid, nothing personal, a little tough love to start the year. Um, I'm going to need him to get a lot better. He reminds me of when he was here last time. 
Um, so, I mean, I was hoping that the time away somehow would have improved his ability to make routine plays, uh, but they, but it hasn't. Uh, you know, there, there are moments where you're like, oh, well, that, that could cost you the game. I'm going to need you to make a simple throw to a shortstop that's uh, got a routine double play here, and we're out of the inning. So you know, that, that's frustrating. Other than that, you know, I feel pretty good about where they're headed. And you're right, the pitching, the depth of pitching will be what we're looking at. All right, so because I want to get, uh, you know, really down deep in the muck with this thing regarding what FSU Athletic Director Michael Alford had to say and why I think he said it to varying degrees, you uh, know, there, there are some points that Ira made in his piece that I completely agree with. I think there's some added things to, to, to point out here that, um, not were not that weren't left out, just opinions that I have regarding how this was brought up and kind of what it meant. It reminded me of, uh, of a married couple on the verge of, uh, a, a tough moment in which uh, counseling may be necessary. It's the Jeff Cameron show, 93, three real talk radio war chat TV. Law offices 777 7777. Hey, no fans. Our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. So let's say you're considering buying a new home in the current climate. We've all heard that demand is high, inventory is low. So how do you get a leg up on the rest of the buyers all making offers on the same house as you? Oh, that's a toughie. But the first place I'd suggest you start is with a call to my friend Shannon at Legendary Home Loans. Shannon will set you up with a complete pre-approval underwriting. This used to be an upgrade, but nowadays it's got to be standard. You want to get your offer on a new home pushed to the front of the line, you need a TBD full underwriting approval from Legendary Home Loans. You'll shorten or even remove your financing contingency, and the sellers will know that your offer is real and ready to go. It's tough out there these days, folks, so why not have the advantage of a proven winning team in your huddle? Get pre-approval underwriting from my friend Shannon with the one and only legendary home loans. Call now, 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 2270146. A cup of joe, java, brew, go-go beans, brain water, liquid lightning, wakey-wakey juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not grassroots coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for grassroots coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Big Ben, along with Love Keto's Foundation, is excited to launch the Big Draft. Get in the game today. Become a Sports Buddies mentor. Visit BigBenMentoring.org forward slash Sports Buddies to find out more. Every day, Sellers makes life a little better for homeowners, helping them find the best design ideas for their homes with the best quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Even mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions are at their fingertips in their remarkable showroom. Maybe it's time for you to get the Sellers Advantage for your home or office. Find them on Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhem Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For style, quality, and design, get the Sellers Advantage. In Tallahassee, call 656 84 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange Theory Fitness the Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the WarChant.com Multimedia. address the elephant in the room and he didn't say anything that i think in any way shocks really any football savvy individual and i'm not just talking about florida state fans i'm talking about folks that follow the sport as a whole that understand the ever-changing landscape of where this is headed and uh the inexorable run at super conferences in particular two of them and we can lament bygone eras or decisions that could have been made a long time ago that would have helped us avoid the current set of circumstances that has assailed college football over the last, say, 10, 15 years. Uh, But the ship has sailed. And so now you certainly are anchored in, I think if you're an athletic director or school president, uh, you are, you know, locked in to the idea that, okay, now what's best for my school? What's best for Florida State? What can we do to help mitigate the effects of being some $30 million behind those we seek to compete with in annual revenue? And, of course, as was pointed out by Michael Alford, it's not a one-time $30 million fee. This will just continue Exponentially. And so Florida State has to figure out sooner rather than later how best to position themselves. There are a lot of ways to to look at uh, what was done there. I have to tell you, uh, it's not lost on me, Tom, and I'll bring you into this here so we can have a good back and forth. The humor that took place on Friday. First of all, this was all calculated and set up, in my opinion. The question was asked for a very specific reason They knew the question was going to be asked. He certainly did. He was prepared. Those numbers were not just right there by accident. Everybody knows that this was calculated. Fine. Should be. That's good. The bigger question becomes from people, why did they choose now? And and Ira addresses that, and I think there's certainly elements of truth to that. They have not been hearing what they would like to hear from the other member institutions. They have not been able to get the response or the desired response from the ACC. Got it. That's fair. That's good. Um, Yeah, look, this has been so totally mismanaged by the ACC. They really run the risk of not existing here real soon, in my opinion. Um, So when you look at this, the first thing I thought of, it was not an accident when he brought up the numbers and he illustrated before you, not just that Florida State represents 70% and all that stuff that we alluded to, right? The more viewers than the ACC average, right? Did you think it was funny that it was pretty clear on that there chart that (laughs) North Carolina and Duke are useless? (laughs) He might as well have just said, by the way, there has, we've been living this lie that Duke matters. You'll see here by these numbers, they don't matter even a little bit. Useless ass Duke might as well be Lenore Ryan, Lee's McRae, any of those other small ass schools in the state of North Carolina you want to reference. They do nobody any good at all. That's what Duke represents on this chart. If you'll notice, it's not just Duke. North Carolina sits just three spots ahead of them. So if you're under this other misnomer that North Carolina drives any kind of television ratings in football, you're wrong about that too, pal. Look at here. They suck. They too are useless. 
The entirety of the triangle makes up a whole lot of nothing when it comes to television viewers and football. This is the circle of suck. This is really a lost cause. We need to extricate ourselves from these losers. He could have just as easily said that. He could have said, it's us in Clemson, and the rest of these bitches need to see us in their rear view. We are out. Now, that's just me being very crass, mm -hmm. noting that that is another way of suggesting Florida State's position amongst the rest of these clowns. You know me, and you know some of the things that have bothered me over the years, and we, we each have our topics that we latch on to. For example, yours is four consecutive days, play Florida in baseball. What are we doing with these Tuesdays? I heard of it. For me, it was we have been carrying the water. Much heavier is the container with the water in it for Wake Forest and Syracuse and Boston College with their small enrollments and their equal pay. Yet we're the ones, we're the reason that they're in a position. It's like if you said, Tiger Woods, thank you for all the help for the PGA Tour. However, after every week of competition, every player gets the same amount of money. Thank right. you, Tiger. Thank you for what you've done for us. Enjoy your $222,000 for participating in this weekend's tournament. And it's bugged me for a long time to the point where you're like, all right, Tom, we know. We understand where you stand on the issue. Well, finally, man, we're getting the moment where it is now brought before public record that the university is willing to say this and put pressure on the process. Like I said, a week ago or two weeks ago, when Texas and Oklahoma negotiated their way out a year early from the Big 12, different situations, I'll grant you, at least we have a price on it now. Well, I didn't know that Florida State went ahead and found its own price. They're saying it's $120 million to leave the ACC, independent mm. of the grant of rights. I know. I understand. Yeah, that matters a lot. Of course it does. But it that's a lot for the, yeah. Of course, of course. But they have gone to painstaking lengths to research their own position and what it would take to make an exit, and they seem at peace with whatever that number is, hidden or otherwise, because you have a quote like Peter Collins today I'll, going on the record. Yeah, 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 we have a very good handle on the grant of rights. Yeah, I'll, uh, well, that just suggests that they're willing to challenge it and that perhaps they think there's a way out. We don't know that yet. I don't think he knows that yet either. It would have already been done if we knew it for sure, but it does suggest that they're willing to continue to push the issue. Let's clarify for our listeners, the number that they referenced and you're right. Uh, just the ACC 126 million, whatever it was that he said, okay, that's fine. If that were the case, we would have already done it. We should just do it by the way, because you can finance that over 30 years and you're out the damn door tomorrow. That's fine. Just get, get on with the getting let's, let's go, let's get out. But if you're talking about the grant of rights, most estimations suggest somewhere near $600 million to yeah. do that. And that is a very different conversation and a very different number. When you combine the two, you're talking about close to a billion dollars. Of course, they not going to do that. I understand. And that's why I thought that that window of five years or so, as of, again, the Texas and Oklahoma development, because this thing right. changed, the timestamp changes and the information changes. But at that moment, I said the light at the end of the tunnel is here because every day you get closer to 2036, that settlement figure lowers in terms of, of what it is you need to pay because we're not renewing. We're not sticking around in the ACC for the long term. You're dead and you don't even know it yet or you're ignorant to that fact That's if you're waiting for Syracuse and Boston College. And I celebrate the fact that they're dead. I look well, forward to their death. It's going to be wonderful. The schadenfreude there, fine, got you. But here's the thing, though. You're hitting on something that I think has not been touched on. I think some of what Michael Alford was doing was signaling to those programs that you need to leave too. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be dissolved. You need to ride. I said it rather crassly a moment ago. Time to ride, bitches. It's over. It's over. So why would you do it? Well, the number eight is very important because at that point, you have no grant of rights. You have no conference. You can go. You can just leave. If you get eight people to say, yeah, we don't like it either. We're out. And everybody decides to go. Then you've got, you know, the upheaval you need to walk to break the deal. And I think that's he's trying to tell all those schools, if you can get a better deal right now, go to the Big 12, go wherever it is. If you think that's a more stable set of circumstances, 
than what the ACSC is going to be in three years, in seven years, in eight years, in 10 years, then you should take it. You should leave. Because, by the way, guys, what I'm telling you here today is we are leaving. This right. You'd never put the genie back in the bottle. He just said publicly, I said it before we went to break, I made the joke that this is akin to, to one spouse saying to the other that they'd like to seek marriage counseling. And when a husband or a wife says that to their spouse, I'm not happy. I think we need to see a marriage counselor. It rarely ends well, everybody. It rarely ends well. You, my friend, are looking at the beginning of the end. Start banking on that divorce and figuring out which apartment complex you can temporarily live in while you seek housing. Because it ain't going to come back around. Somebody fell out of love. Somebody did something that has upset the other to the point where now we are going to address openly and honestly, the problems, the foibles of this marriage. My man went to the family reunion and in front of everybody went, I'm not happy with Carol. I don't know if I'm going to be at next year's family reunion. I'm sorry. It just needed to be said, everybody. This is the last one of these you're going to see me at. I really appreciate your cake, Susan. It's delicious every year. Bob, great job on the grill. I don't think I'm back next year. Carol and I got problems. And everybody, as he walked to his car, knowing that he had had one too many and addressed the elephant in the room, went, I just didn't think it would happen. We all knew they were having problems. We all knew it. I just was surprised they made it through last year. But now, look at him. I feel bad for her. She looks terrible. So there you are. You're in this situation. Michael's like, yeah, man, this ain't it. We're done. And the whole league was talking about it that afternoon. You could go across the entirety of the ACC footprint, and I did this just for giggles. Go look at the talking points of all of the other programs in this league. Every show host that has a say about an ACC program, every message board that discusses this sort, this was the conversation. Well, that's it. They're out. They're as good as gone. Yes. Because they also know that represents the feelings of Clemson. And once the ACC loses Florida State and Clemson, you can call it a day. You're well, irrelevant. Basketball doesn't do a thing. That's why it's such a relief to hear that officials at Florida State are willing to take the step, though. It, it, again, it's just it's a moment of joy because they know this bell can't be unrung. And whether it's for an intermediate measure, which is the ACC pays us out, more money right now, which gets us closer to the figure to leave, right? The yeah. more money you pay us now, the more we're just going to bank that away so we can pay you to walk out. Whatever whatever it is, the change is coming. Florida State is going to be in a better financial position in the near term. And then it's just a matter of, of how long is that medium term going to take until we're out of the ACC. I love it, man. It's just we've had so many officials at that the athletic department hasn't been structured as healthily as it is now. We've, we've documented oh, very that. Very healthy. They're, in the right direction, baby. They're in a position of strength to be able to speak out loud where maybe some of the previous directors were not. But that said, the company line was always towed. Well, we need to make sure there's equal revenue distribution because the health of the entire conference is what's really important here. No, it's not. These, not these in this, It's us. neighborhoods, Tom, need to have proper tree trimming. We've got to make sure that the hedges look good in this subdivision, even though this is the lesser of the subdivisions. we got to make sure that we pay the security guard at the gate up front something. Maybe not what we pay the guy in the back, but we got to pay him something. 15% <laughs> of revenue generation, 7% of the payout. That was the figure. Yeah. Meaning yeah, yeah, yeah. Double our money. We More than that. We are worth more than two times what we are being paid. We don't even you. want that. I'm going to argue we don't even want that. I, that's a salve. They don't even care. They they want out. This is just Correct. a means to have a conversation. They're not they're not doing that. They're, it doesn't do anybody any good. What if the ACC came back tomorrow and said, we'll give you 12%? Oh, we take it. But we're still trying to get the hell out. Right. You just, you you just take that. Please. Yeah. That lump of cash goes <laughs> and allows for you to pay them off sooner. It's just whatever the case here, we are closer to finding a way out the light at the end of the tunnel is you might even see some mountains in the distance outside of the tunnel it's not just this white light anymore there's shapes taking form there we're getting ever closer and the university decided it's go time and that's the important thing they are willing to go on the record and now 
what's the next step? It's got to be in the courts of some in some way, shape, or form, or with legal documentation presented somewhere. That they know where this is going. You can't stop what they've done already. <laughs> El Mitchell, you made me laugh. Carol is a good partner. She's just not the right partner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he did it. He said what we already knew to be true. Yeah, I mean, it was um, it was it was such a breath of fresh air because we've all known this behind the scenes. We've all thought, well, who are we kidding here? I mean, this thing is dead in the water. Go back. You were there. I was holding it down in Tallahassee at the time. You were at the ACC kickoff. And when Jim Phillips got up there and meekly stutter after his way, through that address, I thought, well, my God, I, I thought you were from Chicago. What has happened here? That was some of the most disgusting. Uh, well, I don't want to get into that. It doesn't matter. It's, it's in the rear view. The, the point is that that day, that speech, I went, oh, it's over. There is no secret plan I was unaware of. There is no out that I didn't foresee. There's. He knows they're screwed. He basically got up there and said, I'm so sorry. Save me, Jimmy Pitaro. Save me. Somebody get get me out of here. He was sounding the horn. Guys, (laughs) I got to go. Somebody throw me a life raft. So, you know, it was at that moment, everybody else kind of looked at each other, all the other programs, and went, when are we going to get the email? And you and I talked about it. It's like, uh, fellas, uh, the, the time has come. Now, I'm sure behind the scenes they were already looking at. I mean, dissolvement is is worth pursuing to try to get enough people to be concerned about their own self-interest, that the, that the conference could be dissolved. You got to get these guys thinking. I think that's part of what Alfred's doing here. And, and maybe, you know, it's not a singular thing. It's, hey, Louisville. Hey, you know, Syracuse, Boston College, you guys, this league ain't going to exist. Right. I think when you make this move, this is just me judging those particular players. And and there were more voices in the room that were going back and forth and establishing the facts and establishing the record and the board minutes and all that kind of stuff. But the principal players here on Friday were Michael Alford and Peter Collins. And you can tell that there was a conversation before there was a conversation. But they don't strike me as individuals who make a move and say, all right, let's see what they do next. Let's see what happens. They've already played out the scenarios. And they said, all right, this is just the first in a series of moves. Again, Collins going on record with Ira for the column that was released today on Warchant.com saying, we have a really good handle on the grant of rights. When has a quote, anything akin to that, ever been spoken by anyone in the ACC before? That's a massive quote. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, again representing or showcasing strength i I think they're trying to tell you that you know the plan is in place they're going to aggressively pursue all options i'm not real sure and this is the part that concerns me that we're in a position to challenge this in court and you know we'll see i don't know that peter collins means that when he says i'm not saying he doesn't think that they have a handle on the grant of rights I don't know that the next logical step is that they're telling you they're going to pursue this in court. I don't think it means that. What I'm saying is putting that quote out there, Mm. making that decision, choosing your words carefully and deciding that this is something that you want to go with signals to me that whatever comes next, they've got a plan for it. And that should make us all feel better because I, I don't think this was some willy nilly saber rattling without any, you know, substance behind it. So just from our perspective of watching on the sidelines as this thing plays out, okay, they they really they mean it. They mean business when they're saying what they're saying about moving on and moving forward. And awesome. That's what, what a critical period of time in college football history for us to be taking this approach. I love it. You know, a member of the principal parties involved is talking outside the family, to use my analogy. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. You're absolutely right. They've decided they can be quiet no longer. And if you've studied Michael Alford since he's arrived, He has been calculated at all times. He is selling at all times. He is posturing, presenting, uh, uplifting Florida State stature 
at all times. There is an angle upon every public comment. That is not me implying that it's insidious in any way. That is, in many ways, what politicians do. And a lot of times, an athletic director has to be a politician that represents the university, obviously. So he's going to try to put Florida State's best foot forward. He's going to give you the numbers that best represent Florida State. That You could counter this if you wanted to, if you were one of the other schools, and say, well, now, hold on. That was rather convenient. You chose these sets of stats. Let's also look at this. I get that. that You could do that, depending on your angle, right? But everybody's going to best represent their vantage point, their viewpoint, and their best interest. But I, I know that Michael Alford so far has not been a guy who has loose lips, who just decides to say something uh, because, you know, he's agitated. No, no, he's cool, calculated, collected. That's good. It's one of the reasons that we've put him uh, up on a statue, up, to, uh, uh, you know, up on a pedestal so far, is that he's nailed it with the hires. His public comments about very public issues have all been uh, really, really solid and consistent. Uh, I think that we've seen that he has a vision for Florida State. He's got a, a, a methodology. So there is no doubt he didn't just willy-nilly show up at this and decide now's the time. No, no, this was on the heels, no doubt, of an awful lot of frustration, an awful lot of conversations that did not end with any sort of a breakthrough that suggested to Florida State that things were going to be okay. And they can't sit idly by and watch those you have to compete against and with continue to whap you with an annual, I mean, at this point, and, and by the way, that's the other problem is, and I'll read that quote in a second, but the other problem is that it's not just that you're going to get throttled to the tune of 30 plus million dollars by those you're seeking to compete with. They need, they renegotiate before you ever can for another television deal. That number is going to go way up. It's going to be more than 30 and 40 and $50 million that you're getting lapped by quote. We have to do something. We drive the media value in this conference. At the end of the day, if something is not done, we cannot be $30 million behind every year compared to our peers. It's impossible was the response that Michael Alford gave when Peter Collins brought up, uh, you know, whether or not they could compete with the SEC and the Big Ten. And he basically did not want to uh, allow for any I guess, breath or space within that commentary. It is impossible. There is no way. Don't ponder away. There isn't one. It's impossible. He's right. He's right. We've said that before. Um, it will be curious to see the next step. I do like that it stirred the pot in such a way that the entire conference is talking now. And once you've done it, you've let the, the genie out of the bottle. This will continue to be on the lips of those that cover the conference, those that work within the conference, and all of its member institutions. Jeff Cameron, show 93.3, Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. Florida A&M University announced it received a $5.4 million grant from the National Telecommunications Information Administration to expand internet access to students in the Southside community. The money is part of a two-year project that will create a network called FAMG. That network will cover FAMU's 422-acre campus and the surrounding Southside community. FAMU Chief Information Officer Robert Sr. says the network will take six to eight months to build, and once it's up and running, it will be ten times faster than traditional broadband. Florida Democrats elected former State Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed as their new party chair on Saturday, hoping to move past a disastrous midterm performance. Freed 45 outdistanced former state senator Annette Tadeo at a special meeting of party members in suburban Orlando and will replace Manny Diaz. In Diaz's resignation announcement letter last month, he listed a number of problems facing the party, including a lack of resources and volunteers and poor messaging. This is Rachel and with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with a high of 82. Southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Slight chance for scattered rain showers tonight. Lows level off around 69. Cloudy skies expected. Mainly sunny skies and calm tomorrow. Slight chance for scattered rain showers. High temperatures reach up to 84. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 81. Do, 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 do. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, 
you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears is what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> Slow burn. Slow, slow oh, burn. This thing I mean, just finished I, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go, go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live 30 <laughs> years. I thought you were going to say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay. You know? Mouse it is. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Greg Tish here along with Matty Rowe. And you can listen to us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Matt, we give away a couple things each week. Just a few. We've got the Florida Farm Bureau Insurance Wheel of Food. We have Give Me a Second, where we play a second of a song, and you guess that song. And we also play FLA or Nay. We have a lot of fun Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. Think that's enough? We can talk about our feelings. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience design. If folks saying, I'm interested given that you listen. Yeah, I did a combination of listening and reading and uh, kind of surfing about the ACC. Uh, I think some of them, from what I could tell, certainly take uh, offense to the idea that they're an also ran program that doesn't matter in the big picture of things. It's hard to hear that about yourself. You know, if you're one of these programs that recognizes um, that uh, you don't bring an awful lot to the table, I mean, that, that's a blow to the ego. But those that are realist and pragmatic understand something that's been true for a long time. And it's funny because you can look at the ACC's deal in a lot of different ways. Uh, the ESPN deal with the ACC, you can look at it a lot of different ways. If you look at it from Florida State's vantage point, you're at a distinct disadvantage and you're going to have to find a way to maneuver your way out of the conference. Clemson feels the same way, but you know, who doesn't feel that way? Wake forest. You know, who doesn't feel that way? Those programs that feel fortunate to have the deal that they do. When you talk about the fairness or the unfairness of a deal, well, you can say that the ACC is an unfair deal to two teams maybe four teams, those four teams, if I had to stretch it, would be Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, maybe, and Clemson, I mean, in Miami, maybe. Maybe you would say it's an average deal to the middling teams of the ACC. Like, does NC State think it's a bad deal? Probably not. I don't know that they could do better. Is it a bad deal for Virginia Tech? Mm, I don't know. Kind of tough. Is it a good deal for the programs I didn't mention just now out of those six? Probably. Probably a pretty damn good deal for the Wake Forest's Dukes of the world and some of those programs that uh, wouldn't be making the annual payout that they do if they were not in this league. And I don't know that if we started from scratch, they would ever be in this league, given the modern landscape of football rules, the roost, and the television dollars that come with. You're not... You're not watching networks racing to grab Wake Forest or Duke or or even Virginia. I mean, I, Virginia is one of those teams where, Tom, I don't know, would you put them in the middle? I well, mean, I would say because, because of some of the member institutions that are in the power two, like a Rutgers or an Indiana or, you know, a, a Vandy, you could make an argument for some other schools in the ACC that fit a similar profile, but the, they're grandfathered in to those other two conferences. Yeah, but I'm saying they're, they're thanking their lucky stars. The Vandys of the world and the Rutgers of the world and the Maryland's who got out and joined the big, they're thanking their lucky stars. 
because they they know they don't bring a damn thing to the table. Yeah, yeah. They don't bring a thing. And the teams that I just referenced out of the ACC and their annual payout that they receive, they're in heaven. That's to your point. You've been mad about this for years. Like those teams know damn well they got no business. Georgia Tech has no business. Yeah. Bringing in the money that they bring in from this deal. None. And people at Florida State at the time, early on, after this was all signed, mostly because the president who signed it was, you know, still serving at Florida State University, would say on the record that, well, it's in the best interest of the conference to make sure that disbursement is equal. I mean, what in the world? That was never true. It was never true. But now we have people who are putting their chest out, pounding their chest and saying, we have carried an awful lot for this conference. The only reason ESPN is paying us as much as they are is because of us. Sorry to tell you, it's not because of Big Monday. It's not. No. Well, we know that now. The numbers are there. It's revealed. You know, it's an 80-20 or thereabout split, football to basketball. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, and it's it's probably trending more down the line to 90-10. Basketball doesn't matter. It's eyes on sets. Do you bring eyes to the television? It's not your regional footprint anymore. It's eyes on sets. Pete, I'll read you on the other side, brother. It's Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with us. His number one statewide radio talk show now in Tallahassee afternoon drive from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on Real Talk 93.3 FM. Yes, highly entertaining, fast paced, never boring. We always give you the story behind the story when you catch the Ed Dean radio show. And we are ready to go. Tallahassee daily, 5 to 6 p.m. It's the Ed Dean radio show on Real Talk 93.3 FM, WVFT. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry bucks to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Florida license CAC 1816-186. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn and Dr. Shannon Lord. We are the dynamic duo at Finn Chiropractic, where we seek to get to the cause of your problem. Whether you have neck pain, back pain, headaches, or any joint stiffness, we've developed the Phenomenal Health Exam with some high-tech ways to get to the cause. Our Phenomenal Health Exam will give the answers you need. Get in for the Phenomenal Health Evaluation. Visit our website at finchiro.com, F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. Because your chiropractor loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month. SelectQuote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. 
Coming up next, the more than just camera show. And live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. College basketball coming up tonight in the Atlantic Sun. Jacksonville laying one against Eastern Kentucky at Swisher Gymnasium, where the total is 133. The Colonels have dropped back-to-back -back games. North Florida laying five at home against Bellarmine, the total 139. The NASCAR Cup Series this week in Fontana, California, for the Auto Club Speedway's Pablo Casino 400. Kyle Larson, the plus 650 favorite. He has two wins at eight races at the track. Kyle Busch, a four-time winner at Fontana, is 10-1. to 1. He has 11 top fives and 23 career starts. He's plus 150 to finish in the top five. Sign up now for your free VSIN subscription at VSIN.com slash subscribe. For more sports betting news and information, go to VSIN.com. Mike Sun at Real Talk 93.3. This week at Macy's, take an extra 15% off with your coupon or Macy's card. That's on top of already great deals like 50 to 60% off coats she'll love and dazzling gemstone jewelry 30% off. Or take an extra 10% off small appliances from Crux, Black & Decker, and more. Plus, Star Rewards members earn on every purchase except gift card services and fees at Macy's. More at Macy's.com slash Star Rewards. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Technology allows drones to deliver pizza. Here's mine now. A protein drop zone. But to deliver powerful insights that are on target, you need more than technology. You need CDW to help transform and manage your IT environment with a Dell technology solution that lets you slice your data any way you want to accelerate innovation. Delivering. <laughs> Don't forget to tip. Dell Technologies makes data-driven insights possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Dell Data Center. This is Ken Wondergem, owner of Gem Mazda of Tallahassee. I'm happy to say that our lot is loaded with brand new Mazdas for the first time in over two years. But hurry in for the best selection while the value of your trade is still high. Get adventurous and connect with nature in a new 23 Mazda CX-50 all-wheel drive at Gem Mazda, where you get the highest quality of service and care. Gem Mazda of Tallahassee, Capital Circle Northwest, just up from West Tennessee Street, and always open at GemMazda.com. A cup of Joe, Java, Brew, Go-Go Beans, Brainwater, Liquid Lightning, Wakey Wakey Juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not Grassroots Coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get Grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Hot! Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk Night.
weigh in on Florida State baseball wins the series on the road against TCU, takes two out of three. Now just one loss on the season as they do fall on Sunday. Softball team wins. Basketball team with the most improbable of victories. They take on North Carolina tonight. We had fun at Miami's expense, obviously. Unfortunately, the women's team stumbled along the way there, but it was uh, productive for uh, beach volleyball too, Tom. Just so you know, it's back in season. Are you going to start making your way over? You know, I have vowed to make it to Gulf Shores for one of these national championship tournament weekends. It's just so much fun, and it's three hours down the road. This is the year. Got to make it happen this year because we just, that's what we do. We're, we're always there. I would like to see us finish the job. For the buzzer beater, I was actually in a drive through watching watching as it happened. I was How picking up that? some soup for my wife, who is uh, not feeling the best. And uh, I was just sitting there, and I just the heave is so – it looks like it's got no chance. Just the the body, the, the way he throws it up. He looks like um, I'm trying to think of the old player played for the Suns and the Heat, um, Sean Mar yeah. now, whatever his name is. Sean Marion was it Marion? I, I don't remember if it was him, but it just looks like this absolute no chance prayer, and I'm sure that's how they felt in the Tucker Center South, the TLC Double C South down there. And then just to watch that replay over and over and pick out a new person. Every single time you watch it, to look at the devastation in their body language, it brought me great joy. Well, it brought me great joy, too. And I, uh, I, I, to some degree, I was really like, just for a serious moment for a second, in a miserable season, I, I, I'm glad Ham got that. I'm glad Ham had that moment again. You know, he's used to beating Miami. He pretty much does every time. But to win that one, down 25, to set records and to show the absolute, like, I don't know how in the world he does it. I don't know what kind of a win it would take to see a reaction, but Ham is so calm in those moments, right? That ball goes through the net. The place is going, I mean, it's dead silent. Our players are running towards their fans to tell them to suck it. That's an awesome moment. And Ham's just calmly walking over to shake some hands. He's like, yep, sorry, it looks like I got you there. Have a good one. Another win here at the Wasco. Uh, <laughs> just, it's hilarious. He's like, we're out of here. It was wondrous. I enjoyed it thoroughly. As for uh, <laughs> something else to bring up here, big picture. You know, everybody's at a race, too, and to some degree I did, uh, to, to kind of figure out what I could expect from Florida State baseball based on a, a big series win against a top 10 team. And I said going into that series that, again, it's not all or nothing. It, it won't tell us everything we need to know. It, it will reveal some things that will, you know, bear uh, our interest and worth keeping an eye on. And some other things will still be uh, unknowns and there'll be players that get better and those that begin to wane, whatever it might be. But can we just talk about how great it was almost collectively? I noticed it in terms of, and we, you'll have to tell me the numbers as the weeks go by, Tom, but I am curious. I feel like there is an uptick in enthusiasm for the baseball program. It feels healthy right now. And I just, I, I ran into a lot of people this weekend. I went to Costco this weekend. I also went and saw Cocaine Bear this weekend, Tom. I went by Publix this weekend, swung by Gordo's and got a beer. I had, I got a chance to, to hang out with the people all weekend long. And everybody I ran into talked about baseball, talked about the series, talked about the games to be if they, if it was, if I ran into them before the next one, it just felt like a breath of fresh air to be talking about Florida state baseball with hope. That's what it was. A glimmer of hope in the eyes that approached me and, and talked about the, the sport, the team and the direction that they're headed. It was awesome. So, a plus through F minus cocaine bear. Let me get a grade. Uh, B minus B. Wow. That's way higher than I thought it would be. Okay. So you liked it. I went in knowing that it had to be farcical, silly, and you know, and it was, I mean, there are enough pockets of laughter uh, that, you know, and I wanted to take the boys to it because they wanted to see it. So, you know, I got a 15 year old and a 12 year old. I was like, Oh, we're going to see cocaine bear boys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see a bear on a murderous rampage hopped up on cocaine. This is going to be awesome. So I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I'll probably watch it now. I don't know that I'll go to the theaters to go see it, but when it's released on a streaming service, I'll actually hit play. 
Uh, I, too, was around many Noel fans and, and citizens of Tallahassee who just love going to the ballpark, even if they're not, you know, FSU grads or whatever. And baseball was uniformly brought up in those circumstances as well. And I think part of it was I was out on Saturday for most of the day, and that Friday night game was such a pleasure to watch because for the first seven yeah. innings or so, it's basically playoff baseball is what it feels like. Then we extend the lead very late, and we keep going and going and going. But for the better part of, of two hours, it was just on the edge of your seat. It felt like watching October baseball in the major leagues with two pitchers just going at it back and forth. Every base you can take is critical, and the details of what we were doing were much more sound than they have been. You could feel the gravity of that moment. And Link Jared had put that pressure on his team before they went out there, saying that it's going to be akin to a super regional atmosphere. He knows his players are aware that he says things like that, so he's looking for the response. And you saw the passion, and they're all pulling in the same direction. You can sense that whether you're at the ballpark or you're watching on an ESPN Plus feed, you can feel it, and people want to talk about things like this. And it's great to see because you couldn't pay people to talk about Florida State baseball the last couple few years around town. And again, I get it. It's more of a Tallahassee thing to the you know regional audience that's out there. It's like our local minor league ball club. But people are proud of this club, and I saw that today, the Florida game, all tickets have been sold out except for student tickets. That game is about three and a half weeks away. Outstanding. It's great to see. I think rekindling the magic and the enthusiasm surrounding that program and going to that ballpark and feeling a renewed energy will be a breath of fresh air. I, I, I'm somebody who has been very fortunate in the time that I took over covering uh, or the time that I kind of fell into a career covering Florida state. But even before that going over, you know, I tell the stories all the time about doing homework in the stands at Hauser in the early nineties. And, and I got to, I got to watch them perhaps at their apex, right. When they had all of those teams back to back, to back, to back, to back that were tantalizingly close to being uh, national champions and went out to Omaha and, spent time ranked number one and had a bunch of pros. And that's what led to the frustration of not having won a title is that they were so good so often and had so many chances. And, you know, baseball sometimes was baseball. Other times they, they made critical errors in key situations, whatever it might be. I don't want to relitigate all that, but I, I do remember what that felt like to go drive over to the ballpark with a, a sense of optimism. And, uh, you know, uh, this sounds sappy, but I don't mean it to be. I think part of what we love as fans, is you belong to uh, a community. It's a collective of people who are pulling in the same direction, rooting for the same things, have the same interests. And, you know, it's a fellowship in a lot of ways. And, and, and so you go there and you watch a game and you get your hopes up. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and, and you share that together. Indifference is certainly the enemy of that, right? And uh, apathy. And when you have apathy, said whole, I'd rather people be passionately angry or absolutely over the top thrilled, but I don't need you to be indifferent. And I don't need apathy, uh, which creates a pall over a program. And I felt like the last several years, there may have been apathy setting in for Florida State baseball. And it just broke my heart because I've seen it the other way. I've seen it be unique to this community. Um, there aren't many places that are passionate about college baseball. There aren't many markets that I could ever talk about college baseball. Frankly, if I were doing a statewide show or a regional show or a national show, college baseball really wouldn't come up unless it was the College World Series and something crazy happened, a big comeback, or there was an elite pitcher getting a start or something. It just wouldn't come up. And one of the things I always loved about Tallahassee was that it does come up here. We are able to talk about it. You don't have everybody clicking off the radio the second you do it. People are interested. They do care. And uh, I felt like that was waning a little bit. I got a couple of. Uh, Comments that I got to get to here where folks contributed to do our efforts today. Uh, Pete writes, great show, guys. Off sick today. Nice to be part of your show today. Thank you. Appreciate that, Pete. Remember, you can always download it. Podcast is available every day. You can always go back and find it on YouTube, Warchant TV, all that good stuff. Eric Wright, here's to FSU over the weekend. Uh, Jeff and Tom Tallboys. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, we'll have to wait to the weekend to get around to those tall boys. Busy week for us. As uh, we get set to cover Florida State in the start of spring football practice, which is also something that collectively this group is very excited uh, to take part in. I can't wait to get over there and see some of the newcomers, get a sense of what that competition is going to be like. It is very brief. You get just a taste to wet the whistle there, Tom, and then they're off for a while. And we all kind of go on spring break or whatever it might be. But I, I am excited to cover that as well. But that, that was a big part of the Florida State TCU series. 
Yeah, it's great they won it. Shows you they can compete with the upper crust in the league early in the season. Shows you that they're not intimidated. Uh, you know, if you go back, I brought this up on Friday. Link Jarrett's record on the road at Notre Dame was exceptional. It was gaudy. Notre Dame took care of business against a lot of really good teams on the road. There's a mentality that comes with that, and it's instilled from the coach. Uh, and you know what? I'm kind of not surprised to see how, see them go out there and play well. So that was good. I mean, it's all the better when you win games, and they did. But they played well. Uh, some lapses defensively, like you said. And I, I actually think, Tom, that's something that will also get better. Will they be sterling on defense this year? Probably not. Probably not. Can they be better than they've been? I think so. And I think there will be a point of emphasis on that because it's going to cost you games. You don't have the pitching depth that can survive that. Giving people extra outs will lead to more pitches, which leads to you going to your bullpen sooner and having to throw more guys. And they don't have enough guys. Not yet, anyhow. Maybe some emerge. I'm not counting that out. But right now, they don't have enough guys to be able to withstand those kinds of routine plays not being made. And so if, if a guy's out there now and he's unable, unable to make those plays, unless he's a plus, 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 plus war player offensively, I think they're getting pulled. I think, I think he'll find somebody else that'll pick up the baseball. So yeah, it'll be yeah. And what, sorry, what I was going to say is it seems to be really confined to the infield. There are a lot of issues, several throwing errors from pitchers uh, so far this season. We're, I think we're at 13, so that's just under two per game. Uh, but, you know, carry on's got a few. DeSantis had a big one yesterday. The pitchers are throwing the ball around a lot. I think part of the concern that I have is, again, you've got a six foot flat, tall first baseman. Tibbs, we love him at the plate. But, you know, that's that doesn't scream somebody who has the radius to clean up a lot of errant throws or non-perfect throws. Short hops are different. You know, all about uh, building a roster when you're trying to get to the level that Link Jarrett is, is, is you're trying to find a couple of staples. You want front end talent, of course, uh, for the pitching staff. You want versatility in your lineup. But I think one thing that we got to aspire to is a first baseman that's six foot four or taller. Can, can we get to a place like that? Because yeah. that's what the big time clubs have. And he even said it in his preseason interview with you on opening day where we ran it, that, you know, we're experimenting with James at first base because they, they clearly don't have an answer that they like there. So I'm always going to be concerned when I see a throw coming from across the diamond towards a shorter first baseman. That's not going to change between now and however far they go. But I think you're right. They can clean up some other things. And they weren't exactly perfect on the base paths either this weekend. That's something that I think is going to take some time. Uh, one thing that pops immediately to mind, Colton Vincent, who's hitting the ball quite well, much much better than we expected coming into the season. There's a bad read on, a, on an obvious blooper into the outfield that you should score from second on. Things like that. So there are a lot of details that need to be cleaned up. Uh, I think some of it's fixable and some of it's just going to be here to stay for this year. Yeah, I would always want a taller, not shorter uh, first baseman, but I will tell you the errors they make now are in the middle of the infield more often than not. And those two gentlemen have got to clean that up. That's got to get better. Both of them uh, were mistake prone over the weekend. Ira Chappelle, Warchant.com, wrote a very, very interesting uh, piece in response to Michael Alfred's comments at the BOT meeting. I want to get his perspective on that. And for those that haven't had a chance to read it yet, I would encourage you to do so. But we'll talk about it next. Chef Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio and Warchant TV. Chris Kraft for the Kraft Brothers dealerships. If you're getting a tax refund, you're in luck. Kraft dealerships have the perfect storm for you to buy your next car. New car inventory is at a 12-month high. And the Kraft New For You program puts people with things in their credit into brand new cars. Four to five people with credit issues qualify for our New For You program. And all new and barely used vehicles, Kraft Nissan and Infiniti, come with a lifetime warranty. And at Kraft, lifetime means lifetime. You can keep your car for 20 years and drive it hundreds of thousands of miles. It just doesn't matter. And the absolute best reason to buy a new Nissan in February is this. We're bringing back 0% financing. That's right. Qualified buyers can get 0% interest on Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, and Altima. Or get $1,500 in loyalty cash when stepping into a new Titan or Armada. The best deals in a long time on our best sellers. So before you start shopping other car lots with a week or no warranty, high interest rates, crazy high car payments, come into Kraft Nissan or Infinity of Tallahassee and get peace of mind in the car you really want. 
Witten Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Witten's top of the line bath enclosures. Eye catching storefronts are a specialty at Witten Glass, and they provide precise installation. Witten Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at wittenglass.com. Call 850. 850- Two 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 five seven eight one. Motorcycle accident? Call Basic Brooks Law Offices. 777-7777. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 1130 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. No, this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> what is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket, just like our customer, Christine. I'm a director and a performer. I got a free phone from Cricket, and I've used it to live stream 73 of my shows on social media. How do you like it? It's fabulous. Switch to Cricket and get a free Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Smile, you're on Cricket. Real customer paid for testimonial limited time. Must bring your number to Cricket on a $60 a month. First month service charge and tax to its sale. Phone streams, video, and SD. Cricket 5G is not available everywhere. Fees, terms, and other restrictions apply. See CricketWireless.com for details. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one of a kind group personal training workout, resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange Theory Fitness. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. Here, I'm sure it makes you smile. It is just spring training. Uh, Philadelphia, eighth, Pittsburgh, nothing here in the fifth. We see spring training very, very similar to a regular season matchup between these two, as it is eight to nothing, Philadelphia over the Pirates in the fifth. <laughs> I will tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed downloading my MLB app on the PS5 over the weekend. Pulling up the spring training uh, lineup and just throwing it on the background as we did some spring cleaning before the Knowles took on TCU. Just want to get the sounds of baseball going in the household, you know. Tried to open the windows to enjoy it, but between the pollen and the extreme heat in February, I decided against it and shut it down and cranked up the air. But that said, nonetheless, the baseball sounds were there. Very inviting, very beautiful to take in. An ice cold beer while I clean the kitchen counter. I might have one. I might do it. I have a, I have a system. 
very similar system that other alcoholics have, and that is you reward yourself for uh, cleaning, picking up around the house, perhaps lawn maintenance of any kind. You got to dangle that carrot of an ice cold beer. Babe, I'm going to clean the uh, kitchen countertop, and then I was thinking about taking the sheets off our bed. I'll throw them in the wash. Uh, what what do you want to tackle today? By the way, I've I've put a beer in the freezer. Leave it in there. I know it's there. I know you don't have to think that I left it there overnight. No, I I, I put it in there for a reason. But it's ten a.m. What well, it's Saturday is what it is. It's Saturday is what it is. That countertop's not going to clean itself. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ira will join us uh, momentarily. It was beautiful. It was beautiful, Tom. Spring cleaning baseball. It's back. Your World Baseball Classic has got to be within 10 days, right? I mean, the opening day of the MLB season is four weeks away. It's on a Thursday. I think it's March 30th is the official date. But, I mean, that means the World Baseball Classic. they got to play the whole tournament in between then and now. So when is it that you get to see your in-person games? Are you going down to Miami during spring break? What's going on? Uh, the fine folks at the World Baseball Classic, which, by the way, uh, begins March the 7th, uh, March the 7th, just so you know, uh, did ask whether I would be returning uh, to the Miami area to take in the greatness that is the World Baseball Classic. And I, I could not give them a definitive answer just yet. Told them I was hoping that I could find a way down there if the schedule would permit that first big game between the Netherlands and Cuba. Uh, at 11 p.m. start time, you can bet we'll be up late in the Cameron household as I take on uh, Cuba with my brethren, born in Hereland, Holland, as I was. You can know how emotional that matchup is for me, Tom. That sounds like a, a skirmish you could set up in a custom game of Red Alert 3, the Netherlands versus Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> More than it does a compelling baseball matchup. But, hey, man, you do you. I, I'll be watching the Florida swing is what I'm going to be watching. Well, but you can do both, Tom. You can do both. Okay. I got more than one television. It's all right. You don't have to preclude yourself from enjoying all the great action of the World Baseball Classic starting March the 7th at 11 p.m. with Cuba versus the Netherlands. It should be a good matchup. Netherlands have come a long way. Has Florida State announced their intent to leave the ACC officially before the World Baseball Classic is over? There you go. There's a question for you. I can't wait till the day that we get the call. I uh, love it, Briley. Good job. Um, I w I'm going to tell you that. Uh, no, no. I hey, listen, no, Dad. Uh, uh. Don't even go there. I have the Netherlands World Baseball Classic cap from the last World Baseball Classic. I have it. It is in the closet. I'll wear it tomorrow if you don't believe me. I've uh, had it, and I I will wear it proudly. At the end of the day, I do want the United States of America to win the World Baseball Classic yet again. I remember how the tears flowed when they finally broke through and got that win. It had eluded us prior. That was a big win. Matthew was locked in. That was a big day. It was a big day. I didn't know if we were going to get it done. Did you guys watch together? Did, did you assemble together and, and have like a watch party? We were texting. We were texting the whole time. I can't, you know how it is with big games. I don't like to leave the house. I like to be right there. I don't want to have to deal with anybody else, even if I love him like Matthew. I don't. I don't want to be there. I gotta. I gotta lock it in. Speaking of locking it in, there he is, Irashafel Warchant.com. What's happening, brother? Good man. How you doing, Jeff? I'm good. I'm really good. So I love the piece. I I don't know if you got to hear my take on the uh, the breakup. And, I did. Uh, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> Although. It's I got to feel like there are some marriages that are saved by counseling because they wouldn't be marriage counselors wouldn't exist. Like yeah, they can't be batting. Yeah, they can't be batting. They can't be batting zero. Like there they're has not batting to be zero, but I think we know where it's headed. You know, like when, when you get the, when you hear like when one of your friends, cause it's hard for me, I don't want to see it on my face. I had a friend one time go, well, I won't say her name, but she wants to get counseling. And I, I had to do the, Oh, uh, let's look away. Cause I didn't want him to see the face of, despondency i think he, <laughs> I think he did. like in my head i knew immediately like okay well my friend's getting a divorce here soon this is gonna be a tough <laughs> tough one uh, yeah you just guys out there if your wife comes to you and wants to counseling it's over you gotta you got an uphill battle just letting you know uh i hope to never hear that but i did hear it from michael alford 
and he addressed the uh, fractured relationship that Florida has with the ACC. And I don't think he wants counseling. That's the other part. <laughs> I don't think he wants to seek counseling. I think he's like, we're done. That's the last time you're ever going to talk to me that way. I warned you about this the last time we were together. And this is not the this is not going to continue. We're out. We're out. Get it together, uh, everybody. We're out. I would love to have se- seen the shade of purple that Michael Alford, maybe President McCullough, maybe <laughs> Peter Collins. I don't know if he went to the when they were leaving the winter meetings. Is they got back in their car to the airport from Char- in Charlotte. Mm. I- I'd love to see the the color of purple in their faces when they 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 felt the warm reception to the, the conversation <laughs> about. Uh, changing the revenue sharing model uh, up there in Charlotte. I think we should start with that though, Ira, because I said, and you may disagree with me and, and I don't know what they would say publicly, but I think that's just a salve anyhow. I don't think that that is ultimately going to solve anything. And I think that they know that. And that even if the ACC were to say, yeah, we'll give you 10%, we'll give you 12%. They take the money while they figured out a way to get the hell up out of here. I don't, I don't think that that's long-term a solution, right? No, I agree with you. But I also think it's kind of like, you know, I mean, if you're that wife in that relationship <laughs> who says, I, I want to go to counseling and, and Harry is sitting there like, well, I got bowling on Tuesday night. Yeah. It's a league game, Smokey. I can't just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that would, that would go over real well either. So, so yeah, it wouldn't change anything in the long term, but maybe it expedites things a little bit. <laughs> I'm not so sure, uh, Susan. I, I mean, that I, it was the semifinals. I, what do you want me to do here? I mean, it's our marriage, which by definition is on the rocks. We can win the whole thing. No, you know, so listen, I, I, we, we weren't surprised. For those that haven't read your piece, and I would strongly encourage folks to go read Ira's well thought out. Uh, it doesn't use the absurd analogies of the Jeff Cameron show. It gives you a, a standard journalistic approach to assessing the situation. And I'm appreciative of that. Um, tell folks why you think specifically this past Friday, they came in with a game plan. I think they came in with a game plan, obviously, to have this discussion publicly. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of two things. Um, I mean, I think that they either know how they're going to get out of this and where they're going to go. I mean, the two pieces of it for Florida state would be if you're, if you're going to have an alternate plan, one is you got to have a way out and you have to have the place to go. So, so they must feel pretty good about those two things. That's one option. The other option is, you know, it's, it's more like a bluff, which I think I've seen people, some people throw out there. I, some of my column has been shared by some of our friends across the ACC with uh, some just, dis- some, uh, I guess, dismissive commentary about, okay, great, but we'll see you in five years down the road or, or, because they just don't believe that Florida State can really do anything. Um, I think the truth might be somewhere in the middle. I think that there's a lot of scenarios where Florida State can see this going in the right direction, whether that's be more than half the schools agreeing to disband because they found other homes and maybe television partners have to help make that happen. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe they do feel good about their possibilities of challenging the grant of rights. Maybe the legal their legal experts have told them that, and they feel like they can make a move, and and they'll have to fight that battle whenever that battle comes. And they feel like they have an offer from the Big Ten or the SEC. I think it's it's probably somewhere in there, in that if the byproduct of this is that these other schools in the ACC realize well, Florida State means business, like they're we're not going to have the the difficult conversations in private anymore and all the, the cheerful conversations in public. This has gotten to where this is acrimonious and it's going to be acrimonious every time we get together. This is not sustainable. Now let's all see what's, what's possible out there. And also when Michael Offer brings up the Pac-12 situation and the Big 12 situation, he's also kind of letting all those conferences know, hey, as you guys are reevaluating your landscape, Mm-hmm. We're not doing real well over here in the southeast corner of the country. And if you want to start talking to some of these schools and start talking about the, to the networks about how we can make this happen, let's have that conversation. So I think that my my thinking is I don't think they have a cold, hard plan for how they're going to get out and where they're going to go. But I feel like there's a lot of options on the table. And the one option that there's only one option if they stay doing what they've been doing. If they stay in the ACC, the ACC stays the way it is, 
and the ESPN doesn't pay them anymore, which they're not going to do because they have no reason to negotiate against themselves, they know what that scenario is. And that's a, that scenario, Jeff, is cheeks. It's buns. <laughs> it's nothing but cheeks, baby. <laughs> so, so they know where that goes. They may not know exactly where the rest of this goes. I, I'll give you that. But I think they see some 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 courses, some some paths of action. That's that's uh, that's they know they know where it goes though if they stand pat and it's a bad place. Do you agree? I said that uh, I thought they were also sending a message to many of the other teams in the ACC, like, "Hey, man, sure, you may want to get your house in order if you can get to the Big Twelve. <laughs> if that's a more stable set of circumstances than being in the ACC long term, and you're Louisville." or you're one of these other programs, then you may want to think about doing that. My suspicion was that they did it to, to try to get this number, the magic number to eight, where they could say, this is, this is no longer a deal, no longer a conference. We don't have to abide by the grant of rights. We're out. Well, um, and that's, that's possible. And the, and the reality is, you know, all these schools have attorneys and they're all looking, they're all doing the same dance, basically. All the schools that, that think they have opportunities elsewhere. And so... Now, the question is, can you get to whether, say, it's eight schools, can you get to that number? Well, there's probably really six attractive schools in the ACC. Like, if, if, I'm, if I'm the commissioner of the Big Ten or the SEC, there's probably six, I don't know, maybe seven schools that would be attractive. There's a bunch of them that would not be real attractive. So then now, maybe you get some negotiations between some of those mid-level tier teams. It's kind of like uh, when the cops start interrogating witnesses. And it's like, who wants to talk first? Let's separate them. <laughs> and then let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about who wants to talk first and who wants to deal yeah. with things later. And so you may find some schools, if, 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 if there's a way to get out, maybe they'd be willing to talk. So I think all of these things are now in, at least on the table. Because again, standing Pat was going to be looking at UF getting 30 to $40 million more every year than your programs, and you having to explain to your coaches and your fans why that is and how you're going to still compete. It's fascinating. I love that it happened because, again, no matter how it arrives at the place in which Florida State benefits most, we do think that in you know the, the beginning of the end was what was signaled on Friday, at least in my mind. I mean, I, I think we'll look back at that moment and say, well, that was the day we knew because whenever this gets resolved, there'll be a moment where we're like, well, how about that? Florida State and Clemson are on their way to the SEC. And we'll think back about this day or that day and say, remember when this happened two years ago, year and a half ago? It was written in the stars in that very moment that we were out the door because he would have never brought it up otherwise. And there is a lot in the way of details. And you can get buried in the idea that, look, Florida State doesn't have a viable way of just walking away. No, of course they don't on the surface have a way. But if you can if you can create a point of critical mass where everybody is now talking about a sinking ship and you speak it into being in a way in which now everybody's looking over their shoulder like, oh, this isn't this is long term. This is not an option, guys. Let's all look out for ourselves. Well, then you have the potential collapse of a conference, which is what FSU wants. Right. And that's right. when you go back to. Well, and you go back to when we kind of did this dance 10, 15 years ago with uh, Andy Haggart, the then chairman mm -hmm. of the board of trustees came out and spoke to warchant.com. I think DC Reeves, the mayor, Mr. Mayor, I think mm -hmm. is the one who wrote that article and Andy Haggart well, said, article, but the gist of it was, that, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, but <laughs> the, he said that, you know, you look, you, you're the, these big 12 and these sec schools are going to be making more than us. And back then it was like, what, $5 million difference yeah. or $10 million yeah. difference. Right. Now it's, it's, it's so much more substantial, but then what happened is, I think FSU wasn't sure the leadership at the time wasn't sure they had a place to go. And so there was concerns yeah. about whether or not would the SEC take them? Probably not at that time. There was concerns about, you know, would you really want to go to the big 12? So then when Florida state had to kind of sign the grant of rights, part of the reason they had to sign the grant of rights in the first place was because FSU had destabilized the conference with some of that talk, because now you had Clemson worrying about what Florida State's going to do. North Carolina and Virginia started talking to the Big Ten. And so everything's destabilized. They had to sign the grant of rights. This time, Florida State is clearly saying, look, we don't care if it's destabilized this time. Like, we're not trying to keep it together. And we'll go where we have, wherever, wherever we have to go. And I think, but they have to make that stand because they have no other option. Like, staying 
just dealing with this till 2036, I think they believe is completely not an option. And so, you know, they're going to see where it goes. We don't care about Carol's feelings anymore. Nope. I mean, we've danced around it. We've been on eggshells around these parts for years, Ira. Well, I don't I mean, care if Carol knows. Carol started drinking, you know. I mean, it was – and we tried to hide it. We tried well, to hide it from the kids. With Keith at every family reunion, tired of that. I don't know what's going on over there either. <laughs> I've long been suspicious. No, we don't. We don't. We're not worried about who knows. And it, it is fascinating that that is the the step being taken. I, I for one, and again, I can't give you a series of steps or events that are going to take place subsequent to this that suggests. Well, here's the pattern. Here's how it will work. Here's what's going to happen. I can't do that definitively. I do think, like I said before, and I'll reiterate here, I do think it's the beginning to the end. I do think, and this may end up, would you suspect this happens a little bit sooner or later in a timeline of, say, six years? Oh, I think sooner. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, and, 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 and this wasn't, you know, and again, you pointed out that meeting on Friday, and that will be the moment that we all kind of point to, but there have been hints along the way. I mean, how long has Michael Alford been tweeting out those graphics about television <laughs> revenue? I mean, how they had a board of trustees meeting a few months ago where he he brought up some some statistics for where Florida State would rank if they had the SEC uh, distribution, where they would rank if they had the Big Ten distribution, because they would be with the money that Florida State brings in on its own through you know uh, merchandising rights and other deals and Nike and everything else, they would be they would have one of the highest budgets in either the Big Ten or the SEC because they bring they're an attractive product. They're only lower than everybody else right now because of that ACC distribution. So they've been kind of planting the seeds. This has been something they've been kind of, I think, positioning themselves for. And now here we are. But but as far as the time frame, yeah, I mean, I it really, a lot of it's probably going to depend on what comes out of this, like what ripples are felt from this. Because you know for a fact, you know and I know that the powers that be across this conference and beyond this conference were all watching that video and watching that press conference, and then they made su subsequent phone calls to find out how serious are you, how far, you know, it's like, again, like going back to the, uh, you know, the prison analogy, you know, the, the prison yard, and Joey's been sharpening that tool, and he's been talking about making the escape. He's I've been, been talking, he's been, been, he's been, for months. <laughs> and then everybody just kind of laughs it off. Yeah. But then at some point, they're like, wait a minute, Joey's been doing that for three yeah. years now. Joey's and been right. Can, is there room enough for more of us in that yeah, hole? Can I go? Can I go? Yeah. Where were you, Bob, when you saw me first sharpening <laughs> this stone? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, he's trying to find out who's with me. I, it's it's fascinating. I do think the other part of it that made me laugh was I, I, I just picture them behind the scenes having conversations with these other programs. I don't know if you got friends in the business at this point. If you're Michael Alford, I mean, you just got to look out for FSU, but like, Secretly, you've always liked Jerry, who works for Wake Forest. You're like, hey, Jerry, it's, it's going down. You better help yourself, man. Run for the hills because, you know, you're at Wake. You got nothing going for you, man. Run for the hills. Get, get somewhere quick. I appreciate it, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Get somewhere quick. Find, <laughs> find higher ground. You got to get out, man. It's going down. That's it. I'm sounding Thanks, the alarm. Chef. Later, brother. Oh, man. Good times. It's tough. You're like, hey, guys, guys. I've waited long enough. It's going down. You thought I was kidding. I'm putting y'all on notice. Less than two weeks. They're like, what? Is he serious? I'll go with him. It's Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. News now. Tallahassee police arrested a 23-year-old man Thursday they believe shot and killed a man during an attempted robbery last month. Keith Ford is charged with second-degree murder as well as other charges. Ford is accused of pointing a firearm at four men in a vehicle in an attempted robbery at about 8.30 p.m. Thursday, January 19th. The three passengers fled the car safely, but the driver was shot and died of his injuries at a hospital. The incident occurred at the 2200 block of South Meridian Street. Ford was charged in 2016 with other felonies, including attempted second-degree murder with a firearm, burglary armed with a firearm, arm and grand theft. He was found guilty and sentenced to seven years and records indicate he was released in August. A pedestrian died Thursday after being struck by a dump truck on Pensacola Street. The dump truck driver will not face charges at this time for the incident. TPD's preliminary investigation indicates the deceased stepped out into the roadway with the intent of being struck. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. 
This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with a high of 82. Southwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Slight chance for scattered rain showers tonight. Lows level off around 69. Cloudy skies expected. Mainly sunny skies and calm tomorrow. Slight chance for scattered rain showers. High temperatures reach up to 84. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 82. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Do, 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 do. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears, what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> Slow burn. Slow, slow little burn. This thing I mean, just finished I, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live 30 years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay. You know? Mouse it is. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That thing to be able to mention uh that uh, we're very very close to to probables once again we'll bring those back have a good time with that speaking of which uh matthew if you want to hit the tub talk we could do a little tub talk here because i want to bring something up to tom that i was um i don't know pleasantly surprised is the right word but uh certainly satisfied it felt it felt like the right thing i'll tell you what that is in just a second it's time for Tub Talk, brought to you by pinch penny Pools and Spas. Buy yourself the hot tub you've always wanted at the price you've always wanted from pinch penny on Greer Street. Now, it's live to the tub. The pitch clock works, man. It's where it's at. Now, of course, you can't end a game on a pitch clock violation. They'll have to fix that. But, damn it, man, I loved it. I loved it. You know what it did? And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, in spring training, they're utilizing pitch clocks. Um, I think they're going to try to institute this sooner rather than later. Uh, the mandate is to speed these games up. I got it. And, you know, that's that's in response to a fast-paced world, on-demand world. And they got to do it. You know, they, they, they've, they've really suffered from a viewership standpoint. And then they, do it, they did it in the fourth state TCU game, too, which I love. But uh, I think when you watch it, you see how – pragmatic it is one of the things you realize tom and i think we already knew this but to see it play out this way and enforced dudes do a whole lot of unnecessary things between pitches things that don't matter at all stop doing that you need the ability to recognize what he's attempting to do if you're a hitter you do have to have time to calibrate slider away got it okay all right one oh here we go got it you know you don't need 15 more seconds to stand out the box and look at the flagpole and gauge the wind and adjust your gloves and touch your socks. No. Step out, slide it away, got it. Get back in the box. The pitchers, same thing, man. And pitchers are going to love it. I think pitchers will love it. 
in, pitchers always want to get into a rhythm. What is the number one way that hitters get you out of a rhythm? By stalling, stepping in and out of the box. That's what they do. They pretend to be working on something. Oh, well, my glove. No, get in the box. Let's go. And I thought it worked great. Obviously, again, you don't want to end the game on a pitch clock violation. And I do know there's little things they're going to have to adjust to. I, I don't know. Are they going to change the rule where, you know, when a pitcher asks for a new ball, do you reset the clock? Do you stop the clock when he gets a new ball? They didn't stop the clock on that violation, by the way. They didn't stop the clock when the pitcher asked for a new ball. But by the way, in a spring training game, how many times are you going to let a dude ask for a, for a new ball? Let's go. Pitch that ball. That ball's fine. Throw it. So I liked it. I thought it worked really well. I think if you tune into games and watch these guys, you'll see that the pitch clock works. Yeah, the pitch the clock works. It, it does speed up the batter. They only get one timeout. We focused about disengagements an awful lot when this, you know, the rollout was coming. You only get two of them when there's a runner on base, and is that going to be to the advantage of the runner? Well, we didn't really talk about how batters only get one timeout per at bat. So you've got to use that judiciously if you're the hitter. And then also from that point on, if you have, you're at the pitcher's mercy because what uh, Max Scherzer, uh, I, obviously because I love the Mets, I, I get their news clippings. I'm sure other pitchers have said similar things. He says, look, he's got to be in there at eight seconds. That doesn't mean I have to throw the ball with eight seconds to go. I can wait. I can wait as long as I want to wait within the frame of the rules. And there's if there's anything that a hitter hates more than having to stand there in the ready position for a tick and another tick and another tick, I don't know what that is. You know, so this is this is advantage pitcher. Even though in the beginning we all thought of the Steve Traxels of the world, the Chris Bassett's of the world, and oh wow, these guys are going to hate it. No, they dictate tempo, and it's not like this is something that has always been a part of baseball. This long delay between action. Correct. Back 25, 30 years ago, and these things... Games for two and a half, two hours, two hours 40 minutes, yes, yes. So it's returning back to the way it was. I don't think that this is some deviate. They're using a new rule to get there, but this is a return to baseball the way it was not that long ago. Yeah, and for all the advantages you might see in the pace of play being dictated by pitchers, keep in mind some of the other rules adjustments that they're talking about are advantage hitter, advantage yeah. runner. You know, you, you see that there's a balance to these rule changes, right? I mean, if you're going to ban shifts, um, obviously we're going to see more hits on pull, for pull side. Uh, and, and, you know, whatever, whether you be a lefty or righty. And, and so, you know, that changes things for hitters in a good way, in a more positive way. And then the base is being bigger. It's an advantage to the, to, to the base runner. So I, I think they're encouraging more action, obviously, across the board. Some of that action is in favor of the pitcher. Some of that action is in favor of the hitter. I think at the end of the day, it makes for a more entertaining and up-tempo product. Uh, I'm not, you know, I've said for years, when I go to a baseball game, I've already carved out hours of my day or night to enjoy watching baseball. So a singular game, if I'm there with my children, like I'm going to see the Pirates take on the Braves down in Bradenton um, in, in a couple of weeks. And, you know, if I don't care if I'm there from 1 to 5 p.m. It won't bother me in the slightest. I've already decided I'm going to have a good long day at the ballpark and enjoy it. But over the course of 162 games, if every time I turn on a baseball game is four, four and a half hours, we get a problem. <laughs> we get a problem. And so, again, I, I love this idea. Well, and it's twofold because the games are going to end earlier in the night, too. There has been too much of a reliance by the East Coast to start games later in the evening because they want to capitalize on ratings. MLB is not going to capitalize on national ratings. You're going to get your local audience. You're going to get right. no matter what time you start. So what they're realizing is, okay, what can we do to encourage families to come to the ballpark more often during the week? First pitch in the 6 p.m. hour. How about let's do more of that? And you're seeing that, and you will notice that more as we get to probables and whatever team you love out there. Oh, my God, why are they starting at 640 tonight? Or oh, you're tuning in at 7. They're in the second inning. More and more teams are pushing into that 6 p.m. hour, bridging the gap between the end of school and the end of the workday. And if you combine those two things together, that means that a baseball game could routinely in the near future be over by 9.15 to 9.30 at night. I mean, and when you put it like that, isn't that something we can all get behind? Yeah, well, for years we've talked about this, about you know when, when Monday Night Football uh, was kicking off more towards nine than eight. I'm going, no, man, this ain't it. I, I, I got it. I'm old, but we can't do this. I'm not going to bed at one 30 to watch your game. Like we got to get, we get, these games got to wrap. We got things we got to do in the morning. And you're right. If you want to bring your kids, you're not bringing them to a game. that's going to end at 10 15. 
not on a Tuesday. You're just not doing it. So I, I think it, I think it will be important in in that sense. And I also know that you know for for baseball, if you the game itself, if you can get people to, I guess what I'm going to say is that oftentimes when you talk to younger people, they say the game is too slow paced. It's too, there's not enough action. If at the end of the day, this facilitates a lot more action, whether that just be a pitch, it doesn't have to be a batted ball, that just be a pitch in a more timely fashion, then think about all of, because I think when you go to a game, and again, I don't mind the pace, but I understand that younger people do. If you're standing, if you're sitting in, a, in, in at a ball game and there's 45 seconds to a minute between pitches, that's an awful lot of nothing going on. Yeah. If you know now every 20 seconds, I got I to gotta keep my eyes on the field here. You're engaged. Yeah, I would posit that the modern day viewer would have no problem or much less of a problem with baseball from the 80s. If that's what they would be like, right. oh, baseball's yeah, yeah. awesome. That's all that's all you're trying to do here. So much and, movement, yeah. Wait, did we get to robot umpires, buddy? I mean, you, you won't have that little it, it looked like a Salvador Dali painting the strike zone this weekend in the Big 12. That crew was rotten. They were really bad. I can't wait for this to be universally applied to the major league ranks all the way down to what we see here in Tallahassee on a week to week basis. Well, I hate to constantly berate college umpires, but it's a tough gig, man. That's not their full-time job, and they often look like guys who do not do that full-time. Let's give them the tools to succeed. <laughs> By removing them. <laughs> Good work, sir. Good work, uh, Director Matthew. Or thanks to Iris Jafel. Thanks to all of you as well for listening and watching. Be good, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.